Greetings, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to our colleagues and friends to the ACP AMEA program side event number five for the third Clean Pacific Roundtable Conference. I, as the moderator, on behalf of the Director General of SPREP, Leota Kosilatu, and also on behalf of uh, the government of uh, New Caledonia, who is the chair of the third roundtable conference, welcome you all to our Talanoa on how effective the role of women, youth, and communities are in the implementation of the regional multilateral environment agreements addressing waste. Colleagues and friends, today's Talanoa aims to strengthen regional collaboration of the three hubs under the ACP MEA's program. Though these hubs are Africa, Caribbean, and Pacific regions. It is an opportunity to share best practices and exchange ideas on how women, youth, and communities are contributing to the implementation of regional MEAs. Colleagues and friends, we will hear from our experts in the Nairobi and Cartagena conventions on their ongoing activities engaging women, youth, and communities in the reduction and management of waste. Further, we will also hear from the entrepreneurs' experience as a woman, as a woman in the waste industry on the challenges and opportunities encountered. Participants, our panel of experts will share with us the outcomes of their contributions to the national and regional frameworks and how they integrate into regional collaboration. Colleagues, as, you, as usual, colleagues and friends uh, in the Pacific way for this particular side event. If you would permit me to lead us in a short prayer before we commence with our program. Let us pray. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, thank you very much again for bringing us uh, together at this hour. We pause at this moment to say thank you for your love and protection towards us. Thank you too for this opportunity to come and share our experiences on how we can manage our waste using the women, youth, and our communities. Thank you again for this opportunity to pray to you, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Colleagues and friends, uh, some housekeeping matters. Uh, when uh, speakers are using PowerPoint slides to prompt the team to move on to the next slides. I've been advised that uh, there is a five minutes break, but as the moderator, seeing that there are four speakers for us this afternoon, we'll, uh, we'll skip that five minutes break so that we have more time in engaging in this talent Noah session. Speakers are encouraged to keep it within the 10 minutes time frame. Without further ado, the, we will now go to the UNEP ACP MEA's program presentation. Colleagues and friends, it is my great privilege to introduce our first speaker and expert, Dr. Balakrishna Pisupati, who is an internationally renowned conservation and development specialist with close to three decades of experience working at national, regional, and international levels. Dr. Bala is currently the Global Program Manager for ACP MEA3 at UNEP and was responsible for rolling out a special program on gender empowerment and youth engagement. Please, uh, colleagues and friends, uh, join me in welcoming Dr. Bala Pis Pisupati to share to share with us his knowledge and insight into the ACP MEA's program, addressing waste management in global regions. Thank you, Dr. Bala, for your ongoing support to the region ACP MEA programs and making yourself available to our panel of experts. The floor is yours, uh, Bala. Hello, for our colleagues. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Jope, for uh, the warm introduction. And let me start by congratulating uh, the Secretariat for the Pacific Regional Environment Program and the Caledonia Initiative for a very, very thoughtful side event that is being put together 
uh, not just only to discuss the issue of uh, waste management under the Talanova initiative, which as you know, brings different stakeholders together to discuss issues related to climate change, waste management in the region, and also focusing on the nationally determined contributions. Uh, but what makes this particular event more special, especially for me, uh, from the Africa, Caribbean and the Pacific MEAs program at UNEP, is that this perhaps is uh, an extremely important iteration of the need for South-South cooperation. And of course, the Africa, Caribbean, and the Pacific program, which is in its third phase, started in 2009. And uh, the Secretariat for the Pacific Regional Environment Program has been a partner with UNEP since the beginning in terms of providing support, providing inputs to a number of stakeholders, including the government uh, national focal points of different multilateral environmental agreements in effectively enforcing the agreements that the countries have signed up to. As we are beginning this side event in the context of the third uh, Clean Pacific Roundtable, uh, we can't but capture one of the key messages of several that actually had just come out of the climate conference of the parties, the 26th COP of the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. And in the context of the roundtable and the context of the discussions today, and that one message is that if we really want to achieve sustainable development, if we want to really achieve environmental management and governance in the most effective way, action has to be at the local level. And this demonstrates not just this particular side event, but also the focus of the overall roundtable, as well as the presentations you will hear from colleagues from Africa, from Caribbean and the Pacific regions in terms of actions on the ground. I was just reminded of a couple of reports that you have published quite recently <clears throat> in terms of the role of women in waste management. Significant reports with work being done in different parts of the world. But what was very interesting, a couple of messages that I'd like to share with you as we begin this particular side event is that Today, waste management is just not an environmental management issue, but it's also a significant economic empowerment issue as well. But for those of you who follow these discussions and debates and work on some of the elements related to waste management, it's a big business. And that's where I was very happy to see some of the entrepreneurs also joining us at this particular side event. But the biggest challenge we have, which is a result of the work that UNEP did a few days, a few years ago, a couple of years ago, was that there is so much of inequality when it comes to youth and gender in terms of how we deal with waste. While we have a small number of women entrepreneurs who actually have succeeded in turning waste into wealth, linking economics to environmental management, a large number of women who are involved in waste management even today are at the lower ranks of dealing with waste segregation and also uh, you know, management of waste at the household at the local level. And I was quite captured by one sentence that I saw in the report that said that women are binners and men are literers. So certainly a very good reflection in terms of the importance of women and the role women play in dealing with it. So one of the fundamental aspects, perhaps if I may reflect on for all of us to consider is that how do we empower, how do we improve the lives and livelihoods of women who actually are an important of this particular value chain in terms of managing into the waste into the future. And that's where I'm very particular and very keen to learn from some of the presentations that focus of focus on this, including from Samoa and the Pacific region. But having said that, let me just spend a couple of minutes before I close on the Africa, Caribbean and the Pacific MES program, where this particular program is aimed in its third phase, more focusing on working with national governments and local communities in making the change on the ground. We work in about 79 countries across the three regions. And a couple of initiatives that may be relevant for this particular uh, side event 
is one initiative that has been rolled out in East Africa currently, but it will be rolled out in the Pacific region as well as in the Caribbean and European regions is what we call as the Youth Empowerment and Training Initiative. And unlike the regular youth events where we bring in a number of youth and tell them on what is the latest development on some of the environmental management issues and let them go, what this initiative does is to roll out a three to four month intensive mentorship program where we select a number of youth from the regions, pair them up with global experts working on a select number of issues. And currently for East Africa Batch, we're focusing on the issue of biodiversity conservation where the youth actually are working on three very specific elements of it. One is on resource mobilization, dealing with conservation, stakeholder engagement, and capacity building in terms of biodiversity conservation and biodiversity management. And end of the day, each of these teams of youngsters prepare a report that is considered by both by UNEP as well as a relevant MEA, the multilateral environment like Dement, and in this case, the Convention on Biological Diversity. And given the nature and the focus of this particular round table, I'm very, very sure that when we are rolling out the youth initiative in the Pacific region and perhaps in the Caribbean region as well, we will certainly pick up the cues and ideas and suggestions from this round table as and when we are rolling this out. And this will be a long-term program. And the second batch is being rolled out for the Europe region in a few weeks time. The second initiative is to look at gender. When you're looking at gender, we are looking at both equity and equality in terms of our work. And today, gender is something which we're mainstreaming into not just the project or the programs, but also a number of activities, not looking at the number of women participating in the events, but also the influence and the voice of women that are considered in the discussions on the decision-making process. And the last bit of it is to enhance the South-South cooperation. And as I mentioned, SPREP actually had succeeded in bringing different colleagues together from Africa, Caribbean, and thanks for their time and interest to join the event in pulling together that South-South cooperation, which as you know, is extremely important for all our regions. So with that, I'll close by congratulating uh, the New Caledonia Initiative and also the Secretariat for the Pacific Regional Environment Program for convening this side event. And I look forward to intensely hearing the presentations and the outcomes of this event, which will shape the future work of the ACP MES program. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bala, for those remarks and uh, confirming the, 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 the importance of uh, the ACP MEA phase three uh, in the area of waste management, focusing on uh, gender, youth, and uh, the importance of South-South cooperation, which you highlighted in this presentation. Uh, colleagues and friends, uh, we'll move on to our uh, next item of this side event, and it will be a, a presentation from the Nairobi Convention Secretariat. I am uh, delighted to introduce our next speaker and expert, Mr. Mwangi Theory from the Nairobi Convention Secretariat. Mr. Mwangi will focus on the Eastern African region and will share with us the ongoing activities involving women and communities. Mr. Mwangi is the project officer for the UNEP Nairobi Convention Secretariat. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Mwangi, who will be presenting live from Nairobi, Kenya. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to share with us a case of waste management in the Western Indian Ocean. My name is Mwangi Deuri, a project officer with the Nairobi Convention Secretariat. In this presentation, I would like to make an outline of how I would like to make this presentation, first by addressing waste management in the Western Indian Ocean at the regional level, recognizing marine waste and how the countries have done that, and the practices already going on, what is being addressed, as well as the challenges of waste management, particularly with a focus on Comoros and how communities are being involved, particularly women, in waste management and how their work links with the national processes that are addressing waste management in the country of Comoros. At the regional level, 
you will notice that marine pollution hotspots are actually concentrated around urban areas all the way from Kenya down to South Africa and to the islands of Comoros, Madagascar, Seychelles, Mauritius. All these areas, urban areas, are actually hotspots of marine pollution and other points of marine pollution being the river discharges that come into the ocean, uh, carrying with them marine litter and plastics and other solids and sediments. And this is a case that is actually prevalent in the Western Indian Ocean region, a region also known as the Eastern Africa region. And the countries have decided that it is time to address this issue of marine pollution from marine waste from land based sources. And one thing is that they have come up with a strategic action program desiring to address the issue of marine waste. And this strategic action program notices for sure that municipal effluents are actually draining into the ocean and threatening human health and ecosystem integrity of the mangroves and seagrasses and coral reefs. And the second challenge that has been noticed is that we need to come up with a water quality standards for public health and ecosystem integrity. And thirdly, we also need to come up with constructed wastewater treatment systems for the municipal wastewater and solids that are coming and being discharged into the estuaries and also into the ocean. But also quite important is the recognition that there is a need to develop municipal solid waste management policies as well as wastewater management policies and strategies including action plans on how to address these problems. And fifthly, involve all the stakeholders from the household level, the communities, women, youth, children, as far as is possible, men, the non-government organizations and the CBOs, the private sectors, the municipalities and the government at large involve them in addressing marine pollution that is actually growing amongst the countries in the Western Indian Ocean region. The strategic action program recognizes that by doing so, we'll be able to have healthy, clean, ocean that is attractive to local and international uh, tourists, but more so uh, that our produce that comes from the ocean, fish and other marine products, they want to have sustainable markets locally and also internationally as we export them because we are able to tag along with them that these are products from very, very healthy ocean. And the countries have also gone further and they have decided we need to come up with a protocol to address these marine wastes uh, by developing a protocol on addressing land-based land sources and activities that are affecting the marine environment and also a strong decision addressing marine litter and municipal wastewater in the Western Indian Ocean, a very strong, strong decision indeed. And these decisions and the action program, the strategic action program, have come up with some tangible work that is going on in Kenya, in Seychelles, in Pemba, in South Africa, in Tanzania mainland. And these are addressing this area of wastes that are entering the ocean. One, to clean the effluents that are coming from sources, varying sources before they enter the ocean, clean them up. You can see some plants that have been planted. These are constructed wetlands. Their work is to clean effluents that are draining into the ocean before that water drains into the ocean, the wastewater. It is cleaned up by such kind of wetlands and children come to see this kind of work that is happening. Another very good activity, for example, in South Africa, where we have this source to sea project, where litter booms are constructed and the wastewater and the, the litter and the solids and the plastics in the rivers are collected. 
and removed from the ocean. And we also have a number of such other constructed wetlands, as well as estuarine water quality management, another very productive work that is going on in South Africa. Let's come closer home to Comoros. And Comoros is an island country, three islands in, indeed, and uh, with a coastline, a cumulative coastline of 340 kilometers and a population that is growing quite well. And um, you will notice that the population in the Comoros is actually concentrated in the coastal areas. And one main problem in Comoros is the problem of waste management. It is a real problem and a priority in the country of Comoros. And to show forth why it is a priority and why it is important to address wastewater in the Comoros, first, there is this growth in urban towns, these urban centers, that are growing continually as the, pro uh, the population is growing, they continue to grow and with them, increasing generation of wastes. And uh, without clear structures, the waste are actually dumped illegally at sites that are not um, acknowledged. Now, there is a serious challenge in waste management. Actually, waste management, if it is not non-existent, it is just a study. And this would be important for collection and treatment of waste, uh, identifying areas of safe disposal, uh, what needs to be recycled and what needs to be composited. This is a work that is lacking or needs to be addressed seriously in the country of Comoros. And a lack of technical capacities, infrastructure capacities to manage waste, as well as the limited regulatory frameworks to monitor and manage waste, and an awareness campaign that is needed at the level of the community to address the impacts of waste pollution on the marine environment. Comoros, as we have said, marine litter hotspots are around urban areas and river discharges. And this marine waste, waste and litter and plastics actually coming from households and from the few hospitals and the industries and the hotels, but much of it actually from the hotels and the towns where this much of the, gener of the waste is being generated. And because of that, there are already actions going on to clean the beaches, to clean the dumping sites, to remove the waste and bring them to their safe disposal. And women in Comoros are at the forefront of addressing this issue. They're actually at the forefront. All of what happens, they are the ones that go to clean much of these waste from the ocean and the litter and take it to a safe place. We would need to emphasize this strongly. Of course, youth are also involved in this exercise, as well as the NGOs and the community-based organizations that are addressing the matter. And because of that, Comoros has also gone ahead and decided that it is time to develop a national marine litter management strategy and an action plan. Of course, this is informed by the regional uh, action plan on marine litter by the, the Nairobi Convention. And it is expected that by this strategy and the action plan, first Comoros will be able to know the status of marine litter and to reduce its accumulation. And also, secondly, there's time to make sure that all the stakeholders, women, youth, and all communities and organizations and the private sector are involved and there is a strong awareness campaign on the impacts of waste in the marine environment. At the end of it, the Marine Litter Action Plan will be able to support the country in developing their waste management policy and secondly, in the establishment of the proposed National Waste Management Agency and thirdly, in enforcing the ban on the use of non-degradable plastic bags in the country. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moangi, for that excellent sharing of the activities in Eastern Africa. 
Uh, Mr. Mawangi, uh, given the enormity of Africa, it is uh, informative to know your experience on what is being done and to learn from our friends in Eastern Africa on how they are managing the waste. If I may also convey our heartfelt appreciation, uh, Mr. Mawangi, for your time and resources, knowing that it is very early in the morning there in Nairobi. Thank you very much again uh, for that excellent presentation. Colleagues and friends, uh, we will now uh, listen to the next uh, a topic, which is uh, from the Katahina Convention Secretariat. Our uh, next speaker and expert is uh, Mr. Christopher Covid <coughs> from the Katahina Convention Secretariat. Mr. Covid is the program manager in the marine pollution and uh, communications of the UNEP Katahina Convention. He will be sharing with us on the marine litter journey through the Caribbean Sea. Mr. Cobin is based at the Secretariat for the Katahina Convention in Kingston, Jamaica, which covers all the countries of the wider Caribbean region. He is responsible for the Secretariat Marine Pollution and Communications sub program. Mr. Cobin is a, a St. Lucian national and has over 30 years of program and project management experience. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Christopher Cobbin. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night and greetings from the Caribbean, where in our French-speaking Creole countries, when we get together to tell a story, we start with Tim Tim, Boasek, Tim Tim, Boasek, and may this be our Talanoa to you. So let's take a journey through the Caribbean and let's tell a story about marine litter, plastics, and solid waste management. And like we do in so many Caribbean countries, let us start our story with a little music and a little song. we communicate about the issue of marine pollution we need to use our culture our music more than just islands one caribbean sea one global ocean but we are not responsible fully for the microplastics and plastics that plague our shores the plastics that come across from western europe our own cartagena convention for the protection of the caribbean sea and our land-based sources of marine pollution protocol reflect that we are all connected and therefore we need integrated responses. I would like to share a bit of a case study from our work right here in Kingston, Jamaica and a partnership with the Sandals Foundation.
project has been very successful. Um, our public awareness activities have impacted over 2,500 students and over 1,000 adults in the communities. And between November 2018 and August of 2019, we've seen the collection of almost 4,500 pounds of plastic bottles and 2,500 pounds of compost material for the community compost. And we're very proud and hope that continues in the future. So what are the next steps? The next steps are a, another small-scale funding agreement with UN Environment and the Gulf and Caribbean Fisheries Institute through GPML Carib and the Clean Seas Program. Secondly, that is the implementation of sustainable meals in some of the schools in the community. Um, some of the ones that were using single-use plastics and replacing those with reusable plates and cups and so on um, for their meals. We're also looking at a pollution hotspot in Bluefields and implementing another solid waste management um, strategy there. And finally, that is supporting the local farmers who are involved in the community compost and giving them the tools to make the compost into a business where they can sell the compost, make money, and then continue to collect around the community for years to come. We establish our own Caribbean node for the Global Partnership on Marine Litter through a partnership between the Gulf and Caribbean Fisheries Institute and our own Cartagena Convention Secretariat. And this has facilitated research on the presence of microplastics in fish with the St. George's University in Grenada. And most recently, the all-female voyage, the expedition, travels through the Caribbean Sea collecting information on microplastics and involving for the first time a scientist, our own from the University of the West Indies in Trinidad and Tobago. Partnerships are indeed the key for successful marine litter management. But the problem is a serious one. Caribbean countries are reported to be the biggest plastic polluter per capita in the world. The Caribbean Sea was estimated to have one of the highest concentrations of floating plastic, second only to the Mediterranean Sea. It is a big problem, but as we say in Jamaica, one one cocoa full basket, which means do not expect to achieve success overnight. The global campaigns on marine litter and plastics have spurred action in our region. More than 20 countries in Latin America and the Caribbean signed on to the Clean Seas Campaign with a focus on education, awareness, and advocacy. We need to take these opportunities, find the right entry points, and sustain our awareness and outreach programs. When countries banned single-use plastics throughout the region, they were brave. Many of them took a leap of faith, and sometimes that's what you need. And we also need our champions. Hi, my name is Crystal Ambrose, also known as Crystal Ocean, and I live here on the beautiful island of Eleuthera, Bahamas. And I cannot believe that I am the 2020 recipient of the Goldman Environmental Prize for Islands and Island Nations. Thank you so much for choosing me. With this award, I get to continue my work around plastic pollution research, education, citizen science, and policy change. And most importantly, I get to continue my youth activism work with my plastic. As we are here live at our Plastic Debris and Me workshops. So thank you so much. And now I get to move forward and begin my PhD, where I'll be looking at waste management strategies for marine debris in the entire Caribbean region. How wild is that? So for anyone watching, know that your voice has weight. Your voice has power. You can do anything and know that people are watching you, even when you think you're not doing your best. Just like how the Goldman was watching me, and look, here I am. So thank you so much for this opportunity, for this award. I am a Great. We need to be champions, and thanks to the efforts of Crystal, the Bahamas banned single-use plastics. And here we have another champion from the island of Antigua and Barbuda. My name is Hassani, Hassani Williamson. I'm from the beautiful island of Antigua and Barbuda. And welcome to my backyard, Wills Recycling. We've been established since 2011, and we're located just outside the landfill. And our prime business is actually dealing with collection and exploitation of waste. Wheels Recycling has engaged in the plastic bottle recycling project, which has been funded and organized by NORADS and the IUCN organization, along with other stakeholders such as uh, Serious Business, uh, the Ministry of Health here in Antigua and Barbuda, 
companies like myself and, and Antigua and Barbuda Waste Recycling. And this effort is really to remove as much as plastics as we can out of the environment. We depend on our seas for a living. We are a tourist destination and we need to have the cleanest environment, not only for ourselves, but for our visitors. One of the things we have done in the ground is to actually be out in the schools, educating the primary school students about pollution and its effects on the environment. I want to introduce to you the granulator machine where we can separate and process your, 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 the, the copper wires without having to burn them. Just to my back is the a compacting machine. Uh, this machine is particularly used to crush like the old bodies of, of, of vehicles. As the manager of Wills Recycling and as a member of Zero Waste Antigua Barbuda, I want to make a firm commitment to this journey. A journey where we are not only looking at the health and the protection of our environment here for our communities in my small Twin Island home country of Antigua and Barbuda, but to also work towards our global goals in protecting this world we call Earth, in protecting our home called Earth. Let's make that change together. As we implement solutions, remember it's also about lives and livelihoods and understanding the root causes for our attitudes and behavior. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the Caribbean. Remember, we are more than just islands. One Caribbean sea, one global ocean. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Pobin, for taking us uh, through the Caribbean journey on uh, Marine Litter. We are delighted to hear of the initiatives undertaken to address marine litter in the Caribbean region. And no doubt, we are learning so much from each other in our Talanoa. It's always an eye-opening experience <laughs> to see and hear from our different communities involved and engaged in reducing and managing marine litter. We believe that there is much to learn from, from each other, and it is a timely opportunity to hear from you, our friends in the Caribbean, and how they are coping with marine litter. Thank you, sir, for the very informative Talanoa. Colleagues and friends, uh, we are coming to our last uh, speaker of uh, this side event, and uh, we'll be listening from a, a women representative. And uh, I have the honor to introduce our next speaker, Mrs. Nua Vai from the Samoa and Tokelau Recycling Association. Mrs. Vai is the president of the Samoa Tokelau Recycling Association. She holds a Bachelor of Business degree from MIT New Zealand, and uh, she is the co-owner of uh, SBW, which I will uh, request her to explain the long form of that. <laughs> Noah has, uh, has been an advocate for a sustainable approach to reusing and repurposing of plastic since she started her business, Samoa Pure Water, in 2008. She's based, she based her company fidu fiduciary and more moral duty to ensure that her product was eco-friendly and sustainable. And being one of the largest importers of plastic in Samoa, her main challenge was to find alternative ways to best manage plastic waste. It is her belief that uh, repurposing of plastic is the most applicable, cost-efficient, and green approach. Understanding that the goal cannot be achieved alone, she and other Samoan business partners and the government of Tokelau form start to combat the, the issues as a united front. Her drive is to see this through the success of reducing plastic waste is her drive as a mother that wants to ensure her children and the future generation live in the pollution-free environment. Let us uh, welcome Ms. White. You have the floor, madam. Thank you, um, Mr. Sir Moderator, for the opportunity and distinguished our guest. Um, it is an honor to be here to, again, advocate on my vision as a as a female in um, with the belief that we are here and 
an in-country solution is the key to moving forward. Um, I'll be talking on objectives, um, Samoa, to have an in-country solution, mainly for the repurposing of plastic waste and other waste streams. Plastic waste dilemma in Samoa, issues on waste management in Samoa, mm -hmm. and role of women in waste management in Samoa. You can move on to the next slide. Next slide. Plastic waste dilemma in Samoa. Next slide. Mr. Rishimi, can we have the next slide, please? Thank you. Uh, next one, please. Thank uh, Next one, Rishimi. Thank you. In 2018, Samoa successfully achieved the banning of plastic um, bags in Samoa. However, my personal belief, banning is, is not the solution going forward due to a number of reasons that I believe. Um, being remotely um, isolated, it's, we have the cost, we don't have the luxury of um, the cost of transshipment and shipping stuff over to Sam was quite expensive. So for example, if I were to opt for glass bottles and all that, it is more expensive for me as a producer of water, which is also a necessity to produce that rather than plastic. Hence my, um, my reason of trying to advocate for coming up with much better solution than banning plastic. Plastic, to my view, is generically um, engineered into our livelihood nowadays. But what we presume to that worked 20 years ago no longer works um, in, what, in the world we live in. And, and technology is readily available. We just need to, to capitalize on those opportunity. On the other hand, why I believe banning is not a way going forward is because we don't have a social welfare system. Samoa doesn't have the, the financial stability to um, subsidize such um, welfare. And at the end of the day, the consumers will be the one that suffers the, any um, substitution that comes into effect. But that is just a, a personal perspective from my end. Uh, it doesn't mean that what I'm saying is absolutely right, but it does um, support my, my view and my vision of why I advocate for in-country solution to um, compact plastic um, waste management and other waste streams. Um, right now, Samoa, um, Samoa's, um, what, they, use 30, 34, five um, kg of plastic annually. And we only have a, about 200,000 population. So do the maps and it, it, it's quite a lot, large number for a population such as Samoa. Um, every country is different. Schemes that are successful in, for example, Europe will, is not gonna work here. Um, and uh, the Pacific is, is quite a small and fragile um, nation. And we need to adapt more sustainable ways, uh, taking into account the environment that we live in and the people and its financial um, capacity to, to sustain such system. Um, globally, only 5% of waste from low, income from low income countries such as the Pacific, and that is only 9% of the world's population. So despite us contributing a, a very small fraction, we're still being affected by the waste that is generated by the, by the more developed nations. And that's why our voices, I believe our voices, is need to be heard um, across globally. 2015, we um, expanded our business and it was there that reality really kicked in 
to me as a as a business as a businesswoman and as a mother because I it was there I actually saw the accumulation of um, of waste and I was telling myself convincing myself what am I doing it's not just about the money you know it's not about the dollar at the end of the day what am I really portraying to my kids so it, it really dawned on me to try and you know, really think outside of the box. How can this waste that I'm accumulating be handled? Um, as much as I want it to, to, to stop like what I'm doing, at the same time, it's my bread and butter. And, and the only way for, for me as a mom is to be innovative. And that was when my real journey of trying to research, trying to reach out, started to, to begin. Um, uh, if we can move on to the next slide, please. Again, accumulating the, the waste um, was, I knew for a fact, was damaging our environment and all that. And it wasn't something I am proud of. And to date, I'm still, I'm still struggling to, to partner up with the right people to just to try and, and come up with the best alternative um, to, to tackle such problem. Um, I did, however, come across quite a few successful stories, <clears throat> which are led by a lot of um, female around the Pacific. One being Vina, uh, she's an innovator in Australia right now. She, she turned waste um, plastic and tires into steel. It's now called green steel. And it's, it's currently still, it's, it's currently being used now in, in large um, building infrastructure and, and all that. So this woman who's based in um, Australia, she had a vision that nothing, waste is not waste. Waste is, is precious. It, it's just that we just had to think outside of the box and be innovative with, with everything that we use. So someone's waste is someone's gold. And, and in 20, 2021, I believe they have actually now have successfully uh, built a factory that use textile and and glass and turn it into um into tiles and it's um i'm quite inspired and it's actually affirming to me that what i'm advocating for is possible the only the only challenges that i'm facing now is always trying to tell them how can we downsize it to suit someone no, how can we downsize it so that we don't, because we don't have millions to, to invest in a recycling hub in the Pacific, but what we do have is determination and innovation. And I believe with that mindset, things are possible. Um, <clears throat> so to, to my understanding, awareness should, should be out there. Um, when I say awareness, of course, we all know that there's waste out there, you know, it's, there's pollution out there. My, my awareness is like trying to make people aware that, you know, with, with the bottle that you're drinking from, it's, it can be turned into something that has, have, that has a long lifespan that you can repurpose into something that would be, you know, and then the cycle of life goes on for that particular product. There are, I believe, I'm not the only one, but there's people out there that understand there's a lot of possible technology out there that can work in Samoa. At, um, given the, given the, the, the access we have now with technology, we can all share ideas and work collaboratively to, to achieve such um, goal. Um, um, some of your water, my business, uh, that's a abbreviation for SPW. Um, we did in 20, uh, just before the South Pacific game, uh, 
launched the, our, our, our side project of um, cages, where we have um, cages in, in the rural area only uh, due to financial constraints, that we, we gather these plastic and we're now um, piling them up at our five acre land at Tafainata. And I'm hoping that my, my savior will come soon and then we partner up to get it to the next level. So yes, we are still collecting. Um, it's not as, as big as what I am anticipating because again, we're doing it by ourselves and with the right partners, it can actually get to a faster base than where we are right now. Um, some issues that we have been facing um, in through our journey is the lack of segregation of different forms of plastic in Samoa. Regu I mean, regulations are there, but not enforced nor monitored properly. And I, I don't mean to offend someone, but it is the reality here in Samoa. Hence why I don't agree in putting my plastic that I collect in the, in the landfill, but I put it on my own land taking the, the responsibility because I know that um, once it's there, it's gonna be there forever. And we, we don't know when that day will come where we will have to try and, and do something about it. Um, the, lack of, uh, the lack of accurate studies, data availability on different types of plastic entering Samoa is not available. And that can be something that can determine or help us forecast on how, what is the best alternative? If we know a certain tonnage of plastic that we bring into our country, then of course we can actually identify the type of technology that we can use to, 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 um, to, to come up with a solution of what is the best way to you know, collect waste. But if we don't have this available, then it's, it's hard for us to make decisions on what is the most feasible and practical um, solution going forward. Lack of funding, as always, is the biggest challenge in waste management. So again, there is not, um, we don't have access. I haven't had any access to any funding at all um, to help with the waste management and help put ideas into reality. Time, I believe is neglected. And when I say that time is neglected, it's, it's more of, I'm done with discussion. It, excuse my, 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 my language, but I'm done with discussion. I'm done with that. Let's just come up with solution and action. You know, how can we understand what we're doing wrong when we don't make mistakes? So now is the time to action. And, and that's why I put that over there. So my biggest issue, well, 20, how many years now? And I really don't really see as many people that I know, yeah, everyone knows there's a problem, but not many people are really, are really taking action and, and putting something into it. Um, the lack of collaborative effort because it's not a money-making machine. And that's, that's why I believe there's not uh, much um, attention put into this. It's because, you know, why should I invest my time in something that doesn't give me money? And, and that is a, one of the issues that we have been facing and us as um, we've been facing over the years. The perception again, um, that plastic is rubbish or discarded after use. Is, is what I um, been saying in the beginning from, um, previously, that we need to make people aware. This is not waste. It can be turned into something that, you know, that has value added. And then it would actually, we can actually say, for example, if we, if we start something like building desks for, for, for the schools over here in Samoa, we don't even have to import those from, from the foreign nations. And, you know, we can actually build it here. Might not be as big as we, we would like, 
but it's something and it makes it different and it makes a statement. If Samoa can do it, then why are the big developing nation, de developed nation unable to do it? Um, solutions that I believe can really help with um, that I personally feel that it's, um, it's a sustainable and holistic approach to management of plastic waste in Samoa by repurposing or modifying, modifying into other products with long shelf life. Collaborative approach between private sectors and public sectors. Um, capitalize on networking relationship between businesses and government. Um, what, what I mean by that is I found that in the line of business, we're the, we're the biggest um, waste generators. And not many of us business people are actually taking the responsibility of thinking, how can we help uh, collect back the waste that we put out there? So it's, to me, and with these network of business people, we can actually use their strength and work together to come up with a much better solution. So not just to rely on funding, but to rely on our network, your strength, to, to, to come up with something that is, 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 is workable and durable, um, uh, especially for those that have international business partners. It's... I, I think using your international business partner to help us with our project here in Samoa can, can really have a great impact rather than just relying on funding from, from, from the donors. So yeah, capitalizing on that and using government to endorse such um, project will, will really help things. Regional discussion, solution involving all stakeholders, especially waste generators, which is, I believe, um, I'm grateful to be here because I am um, a, a waste generator and being involved in such um, discussion, um, I guess it, um, you get to have an experience firsthand of what I face re in my reality as a, as, as a manufacturer of um, bottled water. My journey has connected me with brilliant individuals with ideas and technology that can use all forms of plastic waste to convert to use items such as e-block or um, building. The, the journey also connected me into forming STAR, Samo Tokelau um, Recycl um, Association of Recyclers. So my belief of forming STAR was business people, what are we doing? It's our moral responsibility for the environment, for our children to come together and work together to come up with solutions. So with Form Star under that, that concept that we are morally responsible as business people um, to our community and to our future generations. Uh, Tokelau, even though it's such a small atoll um, island, a nation, I, I we we export bottled water to Tokelau every every two weeks, and the volume that they 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 require from us is quite substantial. And it it it's it's not right for me um, to know that nothing's been done about it. So right now, all they're doing to these uh, discarded plastic is uh, dugging a hole and putting them underneath. And is that environmentally friendly? No. Hence why Tokelau is, is a real, Tokelau gets all its procurement from Samoa. And it's imperative that we partner up with them to work together to bring back all the waste that they don't need on their atoll. And that's why Tokelau is, is a big player in this, um, in the Star Association. Um, my role as a Samoan, as a proud Samoan woman in waste management, um, we've been leading the way in waste management 
uh, with several female advocate forming associations to tackle the issues as a whole. As a mother, we are by male auli laina, meaning we are the protectors of our family, especially our children. And I, I believe any mother over here can relate to what I'm saying. Hence, this is, this is what I base my business and moral principles. I strive to ensure that my children and future generations live in a clean and safer environment. This dream I share with our partners in Samoa, um, which is um, also, which is why we formed Tokelau um, Star, Samoa Tokelau Association. And we, with them, we were, we were able to come together as a community and um, understand they've also worked with a youth group from NUS uh, by using some more stationery and books as, as, a, a, as one of the, the partners to, to, to implement such, um, such program that was funded by L ILO. Um, I, Achieving the sustainability of waste management in Samoa requires the right partners in the beginning. People with, that has the driven, has the same vision as us that are driven and can take immediate action. Please take note of that word immediate action. Um, for repurposing plastic other waste streams as and a sustainable way. Immediate access to funding is much needed technology as well. The right technology, I believe, is out there. We just need to, to um, have that access to it and the resources. Require a collaborative effort of all stakeholders and interested parties. The fight is ours and the win is for our future. Timing, again, is of the essence um, at this stage and I leave you on this note. We only have one precious planet. It is in our best interest to protect it. I take pride as a mother, knowing that they are well aware of my stand to fight for their future, as well as their children's future. Thank you and so far so forth. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Nuawai, for an enlightening presentation, illustrating that uh, women are doing to manage waste such as plastics. Like our friends from the Caribbean and Eastern African region, the engagement of women, youth, and communities is visual, is visual. But the question is, is it enough to get recognition, to gain support through financial assistance? Colleagues and friends, that concludes the presentation this afternoon and it's question and answers time. Uh, we'll engage in our uh, little Talano session. And I noticed that uh, there are a few questions on the chat box. And um, there's a question here from uh, the acting director for waste and pollution program, Mr. Anthony Taliuli. The question for Mr. Mawani, theory from SPREP. You mentioned the development of a protocol to address land-based sources of marine litter to ocean. Can you share the progress to date? What convention this is to be linked to? What is the appetite for diplomatic negotiation? Mr. Mawangi, you have the floor, please. Thank you. Um, that's a good question, actually, to see what is happening in the region. Um, back in 2010, the countries came together and uh, they negotiated for quite some time the land-based sources and activities protocol. Uh, it was signed in 2010, it is now 2021. Four countries have ratified the protocol. Two more will make this protocol uh, become effective, enter into force. Uh, we're looking into France, Kenya, and um, South Africa. They are the ones that are on the line to ratify this. This is a government exercise. Uh, but the activities of it are already going on. And um, added to this protocol 
is a very recent one that is not yet signed, Integrated Coastal Zone Management Protocol. Again, to make sure that what we're talking about, a land-based sources of, uh, of, um, of, uh, of sources of uh, marine pollution, waste management, is also anchored in another source of management, what we call the Integrated Coastal Zone Management. And um, I think there was also another question that was following there um, on who is leading in waste management in the region. This is actually a paradigm shift. It's a work that has enabled uh, governments to recognize uh, all the communities, the gender itself, <clears throat> where there has been a male domination in most of the decision-making work when it comes to this area of uh, land-based sources uh, of waste management, this is actually a very inclusive exercise where all are involved, especially from those ones who are generating wastes as well as those who are making decisions. Actually, the example we gave for Comoros, uh, the target of involvement in decision-making is 50-50, 50-50, not any other, but that is the one that they have agreed upon, 50-50% uh, of gender participation in that one. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mwangi. And uh, I think uh, your presentation today gains interest from uh, our listeners. And uh, there's another question here from uh, Ms. Rebecca Polestico, and uh, she works uh, for FOSPREP. And the question reads, did women lead the conversations or accents on waste management in the Eastern region? <laughs> I was trying to answer that one slightly. Uh, in the beginning, I would say, no, it wasn't. Uh, but for now, because of actually the international um, effort that are already going on on waste management, that it cannot be done by one person. Uh, it cannot be done by one side of the gender. It is now clear that it should be done by all. This is the, the new version. It's just like uh, fishing in the, in the region has been a work of men, but the waste, is the work of women to collect that. And now all of that is changing because in terms of waste management, it is affecting all. But for the area of Comoros, it is now women who are leading in waste management and government has seen that it is important that they are involved from the beginning. It is actually a very good effort. It wasn't there before. As I've said, it is a paradigm shift that has happened. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mawangi. And uh, yes, uh... Uh, while we have the opportunity uh, uh, having um, Mr. Bala online and uh, our colleague uh, Chris from uh, the Caribbean and uh, Ms. Vai here, uh, I'll allow this time uh, if you have any other point uh, you would like to raise or any question to raise uh, for our discussion this afternoon, I allow that uh, this time, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, no, I don't have any uh, questions, uh, but but the only point I'd like to sort of mention is that listening to the presentation from colleague from Samoa, certainly, yes, challenges are there in terms of both uh, the public participation, the political perception, and also the economics of dealing with waste management. But what you're doing at the local level in terms of mobilizing the community and also making that small change starting from the household level is something which is extremely important. As we are talking, uh, next year is 50th anniversary of UNEP. And uh, currently, uh, there is a, a report that will be launched during that particular commemorative session looking at science policy interface. And one of the strong impetus that we're trying to put on the table for science and policy to work together is to also address the issue of behavioral change. I think that is where children and youth and women come to play a very, very important role and a major role in terms of dealing with that change at the household level, at the community level, at the local and regional levels. So certainly, uh, you know, brilliant amounts of work in spite of the challenges, but, you know, as someone said that complexity should not be an excuse for inaction. So small actions do count and scale up, but certainly uh, an important uh, point through this particular side event is to learn from 
colleagues to learn from communities and also to learn from different regions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bala. And uh, yes, uh, this uh, one question here uh, for Mrs. Vai. Uh, what is the alternative or what will you do if you are not able to find a suitable partner to assist you in your dream? <laughs> um, well, to be quite frank, I I I am still hoping that the yes. there is partners over there, yes. and it, it you know it's amazing how I thought that back. Um, well, to be honest, there was a, a someone that I I lobbied with um, from Costa Rica. And I believe the UN has that technology now. It's just that I don't know what they're doing with it. But um, there will be someone. And I, I, I honestly believe, um, um, Mr. Zaloli, that there are people out there that are willing to partner up. Uh, because it is a problem. It's not a problem that only affects me. It's a problem that affects everyone that is sitting right next to you. And it's, it's something that we all need to realize and appreciate that we need to work because I cannot do it on my own. And we all know that it's, it's, a, it's, it's a partnership. And the only way for, for things to move is working together uh, in, in a partner, um, partnership um, movement the, it, um, in all regards. So partnering up with government is a partnership partnering up with association is a partner to me. So having a partner is not just actually meaning having the financial part, but making sure the person that has the, if there's a will, there's a way and, and someone is out there and I'm, I'm very optimistic and still am at this stage. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Wai. And uh, I think that is uh, a good way to end uh, this, uh, this session. And um, colleagues uh, and friends, uh, again, I, on behalf of uh, the chair of uh, the roundtable and also the director general of SPREP, take this time to thank all the speakers. Uh, I know it's a tough time for you, Dr. Bala and uh, Mr. Mwangi and Chris from the Caribbean. Uh, we would like to share our big uh, thank you to you for connecting with us and engaging with us at this hour. And uh, here we are at uh, in Samoa that uh, we've got a lovely businesswoman uh, who came and uh, uh, showed the, the, the strong importance of women involvement in waste management. And uh, I think to summarize the key messages that uh, has been prepared by the team for me to read out, uh, to summarize this <laughs> partnership. Partnership is uh, the most important thing uh, that, uh, that is needed. And uh, this was alluded to by uh, Mrs. Vai uh, this uh, afternoon. And uh, on that note, on that note, uh, I take this time to thank you all once again. And uh, you have a blessed evening for uh, colleagues here in Samoa and uh, to you connecting from Nairobi, uh, the Caribbean, uh, enjoy and uh, have a good day. Thank you and uh, God bless.